So hi everyone, I'm Gabriel. I work for uh, Freema Studio and uh, we are the commercial studio uh, developer that did the, the actual design and the production of the game Out of the Sky. So, my little notes there. So what is Out of the Sky, the game? Uh, it's an adventure game on Facebook, so you've heard that already. And, and it tells the story of Radhika. It's a, it's a woman from India face all kinds of challenges uh, related to the situation of women all around the world. So you're playing Radhika and you are going on quests, meeting people, making choices and evolving throughout the game. So this is in a nutshell the game, we'll see it a bit more in detail later. And today I will present you the design choices uh, behind the game. It's kind of going from game for change to game design for change. But first, let me tell you a bit about myself. Uh, before I became a game designer, I studied in college anthropology. And one thing that you're taught in anthropology is that you need to look upon the other and state your judgment. You need to observe but not judge. And in this project, when I was reading At the Sky, the book, I could not help but feel things. I could not help but being outraged by some of the situation I was reading about. And uh, I wanted to do something about it. I, I, I was at hard with my training. And I have a 12-year-old daughter. I can't help but think what would she, uh, she have become if she had been raised in another culture? Would she have been married by now? Would uh, I have even thought it uh, important to uh, talk or to read? So I was left with this feeling of, of wanting to act. But I'm just one man. What can I do? What do I know, right? It turns out I, I know a bit about game design. So why not use what I know to help others? Because games are empowerment tools. So empowerment is obvious in a first-person shooter where your teenager can live his all-power fantasy by shooting people in the head. But empowerment is also in a farming game where you can live out your fantasy of farming without actually doing the hard farming work. Empowerment is about giving the tool to act a life. But a game about topics such as rape, now that's a tough challenge. What is a game for a game designer anyway? It's a set of mechanics. It's not a bit dreary, it's not cold, it's sort of mechanical. And it's dangerous because it would be easy to say, oh, I will just take the, the flavor of the week, the mechanic that goes well, <laughs> that is doing well right now, and just Paste some my team on that mechanic, but it's not about that. It's not about angry Westerner or the righteous attitude of the, the Western savior who knows better. It's not about what I do. That's not what Avdus Kai is that about. Avdus Kai is about those people that locally change things, those little miracles that, that bring about the changes in the local communities. They are called the social entrepreneurs and they are empowered. So, game on our empowerment tools and change starts with those empowered. There was something here to develop, to build on. So we wanted to use mechanics, but not any mechanics, a mechanic that can make you feel. Um, let me prove the point. Let's say that uh, I tell you that in rural India, one out of every two girls uh, doesn't have access to books in school, so they cannot learn how to read. You may feel outraged by that, but it's just a statistic. It may not be even a, a true statistic, and it doesn't have any, any face. But now let me tell you the story of Aditi. Aditi one day goes back to, at home and tells her mother that she cannot learn to read because she doesn't have any book. So the mother goes to school, she meets her teacher, and asks her, why doesn't she have any book? But it's because all the books are, uh, we don't have enough books, and they all go to boys because the direction thinks that they are more worthy of being educated than, than girls. And so Aditi doesn't have any books, and how will she learn to read? So that's a personal story that you can connect with the character that will speak to you more personally, you, that you are more likely to act upon. And the power of stories is something that NGOs have known for years. And it turns out that game makers have also known that power of stories for years. So that's why we use stories as our main game mechanic. 
So we could have gone with all kinds of characters in different countries. We, we have several countries, and you would follow one of them at each country. But we wanted uh, players to connect with the uh, main character that they would follow all through the games. So we created Radhika, an India woman, that will actually get to travel around the world. And we wanted you to connect with her. But it's not just a story that we're telling. If we were to do that, we would have done a, a, an animation movie. It's, it's a story that's interactive. It means that you're doing choices, you're doing actions in the game, so that it becomes your story, your influence the story, and it becomes yours. And that's really important, because we have tough knowledge, to, not tough situations to present, and uh, rather than to do an expose, which would bore everyone, we prefer to do it in a story form where we can feel the emotions and live what is happening in the game. How about the fun? It's, it's, the reality is often not fun, but the game medium needs to be fun. And fun is not funny, ha ha, it's not about laugh, it's not about jokes. Fun is entertainment, but even more than that, fun is learning, is feeling, is evolving. So let's look at the fun of our mechanics. First we have the impactful choices. Who here has played out the sky by a show of hand? So, who have reached a point in Kenya uh, with a story about bed nets? Bottom one, keep on playing, you'll, you'll get there. So, uh, there's this, this disease called malaria uh, that kills uh, millions every year, and uh, the main vector of malaria are mosquito bites. And to prevent mosquito bites, one must sleep under a bed net. Now, but that are tough to uh, uh, get your hand off. And in the story, at one point, Radhika is helping with this situation, and she has one bed net left, and she needs to make a choice: will she give it to the the little girl, or will she give it to the mother who is pregnant? So, will she give it to the innocent child, or will she will she give it to the two lives? And that's a kind of difficult the moral dilemma that we wanted to present uh, in many places in the game, uh, and uh, it, this will be the only spoiler of the game, but there's no right or wrong choices. It's just you're faced with this choice and it stick with you. You'll feel something by making this choice. You will think uh, of, of it uh, way after you have played the game. So this is emotion. This is what we wanted to do with those stories. And through those choices, uh, Radhika and you uh, are experiencing a personal growth within the story. And this is echoed by the visual of the character that changes throughout the story and the visuals of the, your house and the, in the, the game world that also evolves. And as you progress, you, you also gain access to different countries. You started in India, but you, uh, at one point you visit Kenya, you visit Vietnam, and uh, Afghanistan, and the last country being the United States that you're visiting. So th th those issues are even here. Uh, it's kind of a great mirror to uh, the situations that are not all beautiful and pink, and everybody lives with flowers here uh, in the Western world. So by visiting all those countries, you are so uh, affecting on a global scale the world of the game. It's not as easy in the real life, but this is a game. So we are able to, to convey this feeling of global progression. And we have those meters uh, in the game. They, they are a representation of education, security, health, and uh, uh, last one I always uh, forget, but yeah, four meters. And uh, they are abstract representation of how well it is going in the game world. And as, as they go up, you can get access to new quests, to new locations to visit, uh, and it, they also represent how, how well you're doing in the game, how, how well it's progressing. And these meters and these, these things allows you to plan and strategize, which is fun. It, it allows you to, it gives you a pretty feeling of progression, which is also fun. But, but we also have pure casual fun. You know, some of the issues are really hard, and you might feel down or uh, uplifted by some of the, the stories, but at one, some point we wanted to provide some, a break uh, with 
uh, a known mechanic, a known game mechanic, something that is recognizable, that is pure fun in the manipulation, to provide this respite, and, and it's something that it makes sense in the context of the game, it, what, that was really important. You are not simply playing this casual match tree style game, you are uh, collecting resources that you need to complete quests and to uh, uh, help characters. So th those are our three main mechanics. Uh, interactive stories uh, that uh, present impactful choices. Choices that makes you progress into the world and uh, make it better. And with a lot of sparkle at some point to provide a respite from the, the, the hardship of uh, 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 making changes. But what about change? How about how this mechanics bring about change? The worst enemy of change is to believe that things that happen are natural. That it's always been that way. There's nothing really you can do. Uh, you won't change anything. You won't have any impact. So that's the worst enemy of change. And raising awareness is already a big step. It shows that it could be different. But with games, you have one additional tool. You can use games to uh, make the experience of the change. So within the game, you live out a story where not only you, you are shown that it could be different, you are making action, you are making uh, decisions that make things different. And that's, that's the power of games there. Sure, this is a Facebook game. And there are some stigmas associated with, uh, with, with Facebook. Still, we had a lot of players that never went to Facebook before come to our game and enjoy it and uh, engage with its content. Uh, like I presented, we have story of mothers who use the game as a teaching tool for their kids, whether they are boys or girls, uh, to introduce them to, to those situations. But there's more. Uh, like as you mentioned, we have also smaller mechanics that foster change within the gameplay. Uh, I've told you about Aditi and the fact that she didn't have any books uh, at school. Well, at one point Radhika is able to provide books to everyone at school. And because you, as the player, are making the action to make it happen. And as you complete that quest, the Pearson with the We Give Books initiative gives one book to room to read to make sure that this book reaches a kid that needs it. So just by playing the game, you give books. So that's 192,000 books that you've donated by playing the game. But we have also this help meter. Uh, everything you do uh, means points in the game and you have this meter that uh, goes up. And when you reach a, tr a trigger, you trigger a donation uh, from Jonathan Johnson to the Fistula Foundation which provides for a life-changing surgery, a life-saving surgery. So that's, by, by this morning, 266 lives that you've saved by playing the game. And if you haven't played the game yet, right after this afternoon sessions, skip lunch and go save a life. <laughs> but not now. Now it's time for Rob to follow me. Thank you.